welcome and thank you for spending a portion of your Good Friday with us at Shiloh Baptist Church. I'm David Roach. I'm the senior pastor here. This is Lee Threadgill. He is our associate pastor and youth pastor. And behind the camera is Al Miller, our worship pastor. We are grateful to remember this most important and most somber of days with you. Think with me for a few minutes about the account of Jesus' death in Matthew chapter 27, starting at verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And when the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. When I survey the Life involves some dark times. In just the three months that I have been your pastor at Shiloh, I've seen dementia, Alzheimer's, depression, suicide, same-sex attraction, anxiety, and other really serious emotional and mental issues. 
You may have heard that list and thought he was talking about me when he went, mentioned this particular item. The reality is, for all the items in that list, there is more than one person in just our little circle of ministry at Shiloh who is experiencing these things. The devil wants more than anything for you to feel alone in your darkness, to feel like nobody else has ever borne that degree of grief or feelings of forsakenness and loneliness. One of the great messages of Good Friday is that Jesus is with you, and Jesus understands what it is like to bear a darkness even deeper than the one you may be going through now. On the cross, Jesus stood in the place of sinners. He took the punishment that was due us so that we could trust him and have eternal life with God the Father. He also on that cross experienced deep forsakenness and aloneness. You see, for all eternity, Jesus had been and was the second person of the, the Trinity, the eternal God. And yet, in that moment on the cross, when he was bearing the wrath of God for the sin of mankind, he sensed separation from God the Father. And that's why he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There's no darkness, there's no loneliness as deep as what Jesus sensed on the cross in that moment. And so wherever you are, in your darkness, in your grief, in your loneliness, Jesus truly knows what you're feeling. You might say, Jesus does not know what I'm feeling because he didn't experience this specific grief. He does. Here's how. Think about the world champion weightlifter who holds the world record for the most weight lifted. He can say to every other weightlifter in the world, I know where you've been and I know what it feels like because he has picked up that weight. He has pressed past the point that they weren't able to go anymore and he lifted it. That is what Jesus has done with darkness and burden. Wherever your burden, whatever level of loneliness you're feeling, on the cross he felt that and more and pressed forward beyond it so that he can say to you, I know, I care, and I'll walk with you. That's the beauty of Good Friday. Jesus does not just know and sympathize, but he made a way for you and I to be with God and be his friend in the midst of our loneliness and despair. Because when Jesus died, it said the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This was the curtain that separated the most holy place in the temple from everywhere else in the temple. And by tearing, it was symbolizing that now, because of Jesus' death, we all have access to the presence of God and don't have to be kept out. What does this mean for you on this Good Friday? It means at least a couple of things. First of all, know that you are not alone regardless of the depth of your despair, darkness, or depression because Jesus knows and he will walk with you. Not only that, he has made a way for you to know God and cling to him regardless of what comes your way in life. You just have to believe what the Bible says about him and trust him as the Lord and master of your life. If you will do that, I can't promise you that the darkness will abate immediately or even in the near future, but I can promise you, you will have a companion closer than a brother through the darkness. Just this week, there was a study released from the American Bible Society in Baylor University. And it found people that experienced traumatic stress did much better in their recovery if there was a faith-based component to, to their recuperation and their therapy. That's scientists telling us that if you will cling to the scripture, cling to Jesus, let him sympathize with you, there is a way forward through your darkness. Let us help you at Shiloh. If you're going through a dark time, let us know. We want to connect you with mental health resources. We want to connect you with brothers and sisters who will walk with you through this time. And most of all, we want to connect you to God so that you can be forgiven of your sins and so that you can be a child of God in his family who is never without the companionship of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, 
we confess that there are grief and hardship and deep darkness in this life. I pray for those that are going through such darkness right now and ask you to be present with them and to comfort them and to let them know that Jesus has been there and he cares and he will walk with them. We pray in his name. Amen.